Sorry, guys, I was asked to record and I actually remembered. Isn't Abe Fisher a uh, Philadelphia restaurant? Yes, it's um, one of the Salamanoffs. Yeah, I think I've eaten there. It's um, like after Zahav, he decided to do one with Eastern European cooking. Yeah, I think I've eaten there. Zahav's better. Zahav is so good. All right. Are we good to go? Started? Yes. Excellent. I, um, I'm tasked with the job of welcoming everybody and, and I'm pretty new, so probably most of you don't know me. I'm Claude Wynn uh, and I'm the other half of Jewish Center Women with Lauren Neufeld. And we're so excited that you have come to join us um, today for tonight for this progressive Hanukkah cooking event. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we can't wait, and we're, we want to say thank you to Arlene, who's our hostess with the mostest, and to our cooks and mixologists, and um, just happy Hanukkah. You know it's being recorded, so if you don't like that, you can have your screen off, but I think that already got announced. And uh, have a wonderful time. And now I'm going to hand it over to Arlene. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I want, to, I want to say thanks to Lauren Newfeld and Claude Wynn, the co-chairs of JCW. Uh, and really, right now, I'm just going to introduce the entire Wynn family. So oh, I forgot to say that it's a it's a co-event with uh, with arts and culture. I don't want to leave out a very. Special I'll, I'll get to that after the, the candle lighting. Uh, anyway, the entire Wynn family is going to kick this evening off. It's a uh, Claude, Dan, Maya, and Jack. So I'm Thank handing it back to you for right now. Ah, let me find her, sorry. At the art studio. Art studio. Where is Claude? Hi. Sorry, I'm, I lost Claude. Give me a sec. Hi. Hi. He got me? There okay. we go. Okay, gotcha. You guys ready? Ready. Ready. family that was just beautiful uh, and with that I am going to ask everybody to mute themselves now and to finish up the thank yous I would like to thank Linda Grenis our VP of programming and uh, Shari Allen our chair of arts and the culture committee and Joel Berger cut out on us he's our IT guy I guess he decided he's had enough of us but okay but really what I wanna say is my thanks goes to our amazing community here at the Jewish Center. Our friendships and our connections are really what makes it so special. And hopefully we'll be able to put together a lot more cooking and hobby demos. So anything fun, interesting, educational that can be dreamt up by any of you. So with that, I will ask all of you, if you think of something, get in touch with Shari. We can always use more volunteers. Uh, in keeping with the holiday, it would be great if you would care to show or share any of your own family's Hanukkah traditions. Please use the hand raise option and either Lauren or I will get to you. And also, if you would write down any cooking related questions, you might have it, uh, put them in the chat and I'll do my best to get to all of them. Whatever we don't get to during the cooking, we'll get to at the end of the program. Uh, again, I'll ask you all to mute yourselves because uh, I don't know how to do that from here as, as hosts. 
and we're ready to begin. So I'm pretty sure that our presenters don't really need any introduction, but in case, let's start with Alexandra Bar Cohen. She has a couple of other functions at the Jewish Center, but for tonight, she's our master mixologist. <laughs> then you. we have, we'll have uh, Shari Dietz Allen. Shari grew up in the Jewish Center, and now we get to watch her kids grow up here. She is a slightly more PG mixology demonstration. And on Latkes, we have our very own Ina Garten, Judy, Judy Leopold. And then for the grand dessert finish, Julia Ch no, I'm sorry, Susan Gross. Uh, Alexandra, you're on. Thank you. And I'm going to also extend the, the gratitude to you, Arlene, for the wonderful intros and for being our master of ceremonies tonight. A pleasure. Um, welcome, everybody. It's so wonderful to see you all here. This is uh, Chag Urim Sameach. You know, it's the, the Festival of Lights. And the other night at a new members ceremony, I said that each time um, our congregates come to the Jewish Center, you're bringing more light to our kihila. And so bring on the light and it's, and it's so welcome. Tonight we're bringing on the light with computer screens. So that's also another type of light. So I think it's pretty fitting. Um, and I've been asked to make a cocktail tonight. I will say that it is not because the role of president is driving me to drink at all. It's, it's truly not. Um, it, it would drive me to celebrate really, but I'm gonna nevertheless um, make a cocktail that I'm calling a sudgania which in Hebrew roughly translates to jelly donut, but any of you who have been to Israel during Hanukkah know that jelly donut is, doesn't come anywhere near what a sufganiyah really is if you're eating a, a good one. And if you're eating one in Israel, then you know what you're eating. So I'm gonna try and make this drink tonight. Like I told uh, Linda Mizell, I've never tried it before, but it sounds good, so roll with me. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a glass. We're gonna um, rim it with lemon juice like this. So I've got a little container of lemon juice. I got the rim nice and wet. And then I'm going to carefully roll it in powdered sugar. So it has a nice festive looking powdered rim, just like a jelly donut might. The next step is to carefully put ice cubes in there so that you don't make the powdered sugar fly all over the place. In fact, I'm not supposed to even drop it in there because as you can, you might not be able to see it's, it's, it is going all over the place, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. The next is to pour two ounces of vanilla vodka. I have absolute vanilla and wow, I'm lucky that opened because I didn't test that beforehand. So this is about two ounces. and three fourths ounce of lemon juice. Getting a little cloudy now. And then three fourths ounce Chambord liqueur. And I've already done this wrong. That's so funny, really funny because all of this I'm supposed to be pouring in my brand new cocktail shaker that I explained before the Zoom started. I didn't even know how to open until today. So the best chefs know you have to improvise sometimes. So I'm going to just try not to mess up my powdered sugar rim, put it all in there, put the three fourths ounce of Chambord into the cocktail shaker. And this is a fine raspberry liqueur. There go. And I'm going to shake this up with the ice. Shake until frosty. And then I'm supposed to strain it into my prepared glass that still has a little bit of the powdered sugar on the rim. And you can garnish it with a twist of lemon and some raspberries. Voila, a Sufganiya jelly donut. Cheers. That looks gorgeous. I want to know Let's what it tastes like, please. Let's try it. Okay, I'm going to try it. 
you know what? It's not bad. It's pretty smooth. And it does taste a little bit like a souffrania. Anybody have any questions for Alexandra? Other than how does it taste? <laughs> Other than tell us the story of your shaker. <laughs> well, Alan Medvin will tell you the story of my shaker because he knows, because when I bought it and I said, I can't even open this thing, I called him because I know he's the master martini maker and he definitely has a cocktail shaker. Um, unlike most of us who probably just take a ball jar and, and, and shake it in that. And uh, when I brought it to him, he took one look at it used his manly strength and pried it open and said, you just need to really be aggressive with it. So that's my cocktail shaker story. Will, will you be serving these Friday night? That's a good idea. At school? <laughs> At school. <laughs> I, could serve, I could serve these on a Friday night. I could serve, you know, by the way, speaking of Friday nights, this is something for everybody to look forward to. Um, many of you have joined us over the summer for cocktails in the courtyard in the beautiful Jessica's garden over the summer. And we figured now that it's getting really cold, why not move the cocktails into the corridor? So twice a month, we're gonna have cocktails in the corridor and they'll be hosted by a different board member each time. And the board member will be able to come up with their own fun drink. Maybe maybe we could take suggestions. Maybe we'll make a souvenir and we'll be inviting people to come. Everybody's welcome to come, but um, I do hope that some of you will join us for the, for the very first cocktail in the corridor, which will be December 10th. And I'm coming home from Florida on December 8th, so I'm fine. Perfect. <laughs> Arlene, if, if somebody has their hand up, but I cannot find them. So if you have your hand up, could you just let us know, please? Uh, how about if uh, whoever has a hand up, start by un unmuting yourself so you can ask a question personally. Okay, well, the how do, okay, well the, the little hand signal is raised here. I don't know who it is. Okay. There was someone earlier, but um, it was put down. So Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I don't call this glitches, by the way. I call this the way it's supposed to be run. <laughs> okay, so Alexandra, I understand you have to run. You have some appointment. I am studying Musar, so I feel like I have to be a good pupil. And that is why we are recording because I really wanna see the rest of the program. But thank you everybody for coming and, and making or watching me make a cocktail this evening. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What's, your midah? What's your midah of the week? Um, this week, it, we, just did, we just did Savla Nut. Wait, Linda, are you telling? I was just saying, I thought you were stumbling. So I was just helping you. Forgiveness, no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just did patience and now we're doing forgiveness. So I'll forgive you for that, Linda. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Alexandra. We'll, we'll see you next time at the next cocktail party. I like that. <laughs> okay. Um, Shari, where are you? I think you're up. Now, now we go for the PG cocktail. I, I thought... Uh... Was Susan gonna mix first? Um, I can go ahead and um, get going, whatever you want. That way maybe we have time to bake it and see what That's right, out. That's what, that is what we decided. I'm glad you um, remembered. Okay, so I'm, I am on, let me move this around so I can see. Um, just a little prelude to um, what I'm gonna be doing when I got a call about doing this. Um, I missed the call and I looked at the message and it said, um, I got a message. It said, hi, grandmom. And I'm like, grandmom, I haven't spoken to you since 1986. I'm so delighted to hear from you. You know, I guess now in heaven they have cell phones and maybe I can call you back. And then when I went back and listen to the message. It wasn't grandmom, it was Linda Grenis asking me to do a cooking demonstration. It would have been really fun to have it be grandmom, but um, <laughs> I'm happy Sorry. to be here. <laughs> Susan, do you, are any of your kids or grandchildren here? Did any of them come to this? I think one of them is here. My granddaughter, Neely, I saw just entered. So if any of them show up, a lot of them have young kids and um, work full time. So. Um, I think Neely is here, but in any case, all right. So 
Um, when Linda asked me to do this, I really, usually after our Hanukkah parties, we just have dreidel cookies and that didn't sound terribly exciting to do. So I looked and tried to find something with olive oil and I came across a recipe that's a citrus and olive oil bun cake. And what you're going to see tonight is my third iteration on this cake. Um, and because the first time it wasn't lemony enough and the second time I made it, I kind of got pummeled with the lemon. And so hopefully tonight I will get it just right. So what I've already done is um, I've started to mix the egg yolks, the um, three teaspoons of citrus zest, and what else is in here? And sugar. So the recipe calls for getting it thick and um, pale. So I'm just going to finish this up. So we'll let that go another minute or so. And if anybody has any questions, please write them in the chat right. and uh, we'll, we'll get to them so that Susan can answer them. So Susan, let me ask, this, this, this uh, cake is parv? I'm this sorry? cake is totally parv? Yes, this is parv. For, for those with dairy allergies, you know who I'm talking about. So I think this is sufficiently, please let me be able to get this out of here. What is going on here? Hold on. Um, there, Ooh, that would have been bad. Okay, so I have this nice thick egg yolk, egg, not egg, egg and um, sugar mixture. And to that, I'm gonna add the flour. And the instructions say to add the flour, salt and baking powder and mix until just combined, do not over mix. So I'm gonna put my paddle attachment back in for that and just add this. Oops. Time. Ira, the recipes came with the link. They were attached. Hi, Grandma. I'm just saying hi. Hi, is it's, that really? Uh, it's Tirza. Hi, Tirza. How are you? Yeah, doing well. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Here's so, so nice for you to come. Yeah, it's so nice to see my grandmother be a star again. <laughs> Always this is a faithful attendant. Okay, so that's the flour. Now I have to add the um, the juice and the olive oil. So um, this recipe. You know, I was concerned about using really strong olive oil. So I found this, which is organic and it says it has a mild flavor. I didn't want it to shriek olive oil. So I did add a little bit of um, a stronger olive oil, but it hopefully won't be too much. Susan, you just dump it all in at one time? I just dumped all the olive oil in okay. one time. Now I am mixing this up. There's a little flour up here. And the same way that Alexandra went out and got herself a new cocktail shaker, I went out and treated myself to a new bun pan. How exciting is that? So my gorgeous new bun pan. Oh yeah. And that way my one that's 43 years old is done for. It has seen better days. So, so every 43 years you'll be buying yourself a new bun pan. 40 years, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is put this into the bun pan, put it in the oven, and with any kind of luck, 
at the end of the program, we can um, take the cake out and see how it turned out. But if it isn't ready, we have, I will come back and ice this cake that I made earlier in the week. This is the one that's too, too lemony. So this is what we get at the end, but we'll see if we can um, do it. So I'm gonna pour this into the bun pan. The other thing about this cake is I found it seemed to be browning very quickly when it's in the oven. So I'm gonna cook it for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna put aluminum foil over the top for the rest of the baking. So hopefully it won't brown quite as quickly. So I will just- And then while you're cooking, I think we're gonna go over to Judy. Correct. I have a question. Do you have to um, to, to uh, do something to the bun pan so it doesn't stick? That's my yes, problem I always. Know. Okay. I was lazy tonight and I just sprayed it with Pam with flour. Um, when I'm not lazy, I prefer to use, you know, um, what is it? Earth balance and flour because I don't know the ingredients on the Pam are... I'll read you the ingredients on the pan. It doesn't sound lovely. I know, it's, they're kind of sketchy, but we tend to use it anyway because it is that much easier. Exactly, I like that sketchy. Okay, so I will just finish putting this in. Well, you don't get a terrific view there. Okay, so here we go. It's ready to go in and it does get, I just want to get the last bit. So if you want, if you guys want to, um, you know, work with Judy now or um, Shari. I think, I think we're going to go over to Shari now. Okay. All right. So let's say a prayer that this, you know, finishes up and um, is yummy. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Shari, you're on. Hi. So I am making a mocktail. So I figured... We'll make it nice and fun. It's called Shiver and Shine. So the first thing that you do is take your cup. We're going to do a rim. We're doing it using honey. So very lightly in the honey, otherwise it really drips. And I have my co-mixologist here, my mini. -in. And then once you dip it in the honey, then I have just some gold sprinkles. Yeah, what is that? Gold sparkles, sprinkles. Oh, okay. So rinse your glass in the bowl. And then we're going to fill our cup halfway with some apple juice. Make sure it's yellow apple juice. I almost bought red apple juice by accident earlier today, and that would not have been as uh, festive and similar to our life. After that, make it about three quarters of the way with some salsa. Right now I'm using peach ginger salsa because I love that. If you um, don't want to use salsa or want to make it a little sweet, you can do Sprite. Rabbi, you have a question. Unmute, unmute yourself. I just I need to go teach, teach. So I am letting you all know that I have you here for the beginning and I will see you hopefully on Shabbat or tomorrow night and soon. And I have the recipes, so I look forward to making them. Especially. And this is being recorded, so you can always uh, access it. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank Take you. care. Thanks for joining us. All right, the next step Happy is- Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. We are going to make ourselves an apple dreidel. So if you can see here, I actually cut the apple a little bit. I'm gonna cut it so that it's basically square. So I've got my little square, and then I'm going to cut diagonally to make the base of my dreidel, and then cut diagonal the other way to really make it so that it can spin. So now I have my 3D dreidel, and I have my, of course, have a spinner. So I'm going to take a whole clue and put it in top. So now I have my dreidel. 
to add in. I have to say that is seriously cute. <laughs> and I'm going to drop my dreidel in. And then I have decided that I like adding a little bit of color in. And I love pomegranate seeds and they remind me of the fire and it's totally on um, season. So I'm adding in a little bit of pomegranate seeds. And then if you would like, you can always add in a rosemary spray. And then you're good to go. Wanna try? Mm, yum. Wanna try? Brad is gonna try. Stand up. No, okay. She doesn't wanna try. So enjoy. Now you may as well put the black in. I'm sorry, so, yeah, yeah, you might as well put it. Yeah, uh-huh. All right. Sure, thank you. Uh, any questions from me? I love the dreidel, I have to tell you. I thought that was really adorable. And I think now we're going to cut over to Judy. Hi, I did like that dreidel too, quite clever. Um, we are making regular old potato latkes today. And uh, my daughter and family were here on Friday and we did about 10 pounds of latkes then. I'm making it much easier tonight. Janet and Dylan are on the call, they helped. And when Mike and I, my sister-in-law B, who's also on the call, used to have these wonderful Hanukkah parties and we would make 20 pounds of latkes or 20, use 20 pounds of potatoes. And it was an all day affair, but we learned if we could take the electric fry pan on our screened porch, we did not have to smell the smell for eight days. So on Friday, that's what we tried, except it was so cold and windy that we gave up because Mike said the oil is not heating up. So we came inside. Today, I'm gonna make it really easy. I gave you the recipe for two pounds of potatoes. I'm only gonna do one pound but I'm gonna start by heating up the oil and I hope it will get hot enough by the time I'm ready to fry. So I have pre-peeled the potatoes. This is about a pound, if it's not quite right, it doesn't matter. And because they've been sitting in water, I wanna dry them off a little bit. And I could use a box grater, but I'm lazy. So I'm using my trusty Cuisinart and for me, it's just easier. I use a fine shredder and then I'll use what I call the killer blade, which is this. And it's the killer blade because if you're not careful, you will get cut. So here goes. I'll stick in the onion and I'll put a potato in at the same time because it'll hold it. And, okay, so now, well, some of it didn't go through completely, but it doesn't matter. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the whole mixture into this strainer. And by the way, I use my hands rather than spatulas. It's just easier. So this is in and I'm going to try to press out the water as much as I can. Otherwise the lactose when they hit the oil will splatter a lot. So I'll push it down a little bit. And then I will show you, some of you I'm sure have done this where you use the potato starch. I don't like flour. I sometimes use matzo meal. But my favorite is potato starch and for my gluten-free people, that works perfectly. So right now I'm putting in my killer blade, one egg, I've pre-measured the salt and pepper and I have matzo meal if I need it, but I don't think that I will. Judy, I'm going to interrupt with a question from Linda myself. Sure. What is the ratio of potatoes to onions? I use 
For two pounds, I use a pretty good sized onion. So one pound, I used half a big onion. And if you like it more oniony, you use a bigger onion. And if you don't like onions, you use a smaller onion. How's that for being specific, Linda? Sounds so, like my mother's recipe. If you, yeah. if you have it, you throw it in. That's right. Okay, so I am now going to put this in. And I haven't, you need to work fast. Otherwise the potatoes get dark. I like Yukon gold potatoes because I like the color. Idaho seem to darken faster than anything. So I don't like using them. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll try to pour it this way. I'm pouring off the water and I purposely have my green little thing here. I'll show you. This is the potatoes. Can you see it? The potato starch that's left. So that should do it. it it's a little bit liquidy because I'm working fast. So I may just add a drop of matzo milk. And that is it. And I'm just going to pulse it a few times. Mix it. But I can see that the white pepper is a totally mix, so I'll finish it up in the bowl. Um, let's see. So that's kind of what it looks like. I will put this, put this in the bowl because it's easier to scoop from the bowl than it is from the Cuisinart. And my Cuisinart is well used. My pause, my pulse button has seen better days, but it still works, so I'm not getting a new one. I'm coming back, I just want to put this in. So I could use, oh, I think I'm gonna use my magic fork. I love this fork just to mix it around because I noticed that the pepper was not totally uh, blended in. Is that one of those plastic ones from Solatapa? Yes, and I really like it. Now the one, here's the tricky part. When I have a, the electric fry pan, it's very easy to set it for 350 degrees. But let's see what happens. Yeah, that's pretty good. I find, which way are you doing this? Yeah. I find using a quarter cup measure pretty good. I'm making, I've made them all different sizes. Sometimes we do cocktail ones and we use a teaspoon. Okay, question from Susan Gross. Yes, how, Susan. How finely chopped is the mixture and do you keep any potato shreds? I have, I've done it both ways. It's, this is pretty chopped. I find when I use the potato shreds, because I used to hold some back and mix it so it was lacier, but it just gets all over the oil. So I, however I do it, Sometimes it doesn't get chopped as much, and then it's a little lacier and more shreddy. But this is pretty much chopped. And I suppose I could have just used the pillar blade by itself and not done the double process, but then I would have had to cut the potatoes and the onions into, into sort of large dice. And I find this is just easier. So when, it starts getting a little bit brown around the edges. I will then flip them, but they're not quite ready yet. Yeah, but I feel like I can smell it from here. Well, oh, thank you for reminding me. I hope you can, if the you fan. can't hear it, I'll turn it off. Or I'll, I'll make it a little low. But I meant to do that when I started. Um, what else so are I these think? basically quarter cup each? Yes, these are. All right. It's just, it's faster to do big ones 
if they take longer to do, but if they're not quite as fussy. This one's starting to get done more. And then I'm gonna flip it. Now, I often make them in advance and then I freeze them. And in the recipe, there's a whole thing on get them light brown, not dark brown. Let's see. Okay. I would call that light brown because I'm likely to reheat them again. And I freeze them, I flash freeze them. I put them on a, in a, on a cookie sheet or something on a piece of foil or parchment. And um, I freeze them. And then when I'm ready to reheat them, I put them in a very hot oven about 450 and they get crispy again. These, I will say, these are thicker than I usually make. However, you just, as Alexandra said, you just roll with it. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? Uh, well, one, there's a comment from Lynn. Uh, Mike, we want to thank you for your wonderful uh, camera work. <laughs> thank you. Oh, the, the other thing, Mike, why don't you back up a little bit. When they're done, I sometimes put them on a brown paper bag and sometimes paper towels, but the brown paper bag seems to absorb the grease and there is a lot of grease. So let me see if this is... It's, so it's it's like if anybody would like to share a uh, Hanukkah tradition from their family, please feel free. We'd love to hear some. I'm going to take these off because they will get reheated. But what I can do is I can let one get much browner. But in the meantime, I will put some more in. Maybe I'll make some a little smaller. They'll go faster. Press it down. And some, okay, here's, sometimes we do sort of appetizer size ones. And then press that down. Okay, I also wanna make an announcement about latkes. Uh, the Jewish Center Men's Club is giving out latkes uh, tomorrow, I believe. They, uh, you'll have to stop by and pick them up at the Jewish Center. But um, we, they did it last year, it was wonderful. So everybody stop in. Okay, so that's, I think this could be a little hotter. How do you cook the frozen ones? The frozen, Mike asked how you cook the frozen ones. Yeah. You put them on a cookie sheet on foil or parchment in a, in a hot oven, like 450 and you, Bake them until they're nice and brown. This is really, they usually get darker than this. Let's okay, the latkes see. that the men's club is doing, you can pick them up tomorrow. You can also pick them up on Sunday. Good. Because I'm not making any more after this. So I'll pick up men's club latkes. Yeah, our tradition is also you smell up the house only once. So that's it. I think we can see how Susan's cake is doing. Judy, okay. thank you. Any other questions to... for Judy? These are, I must say, these are a whole lot bigger than we usually do. They're thicker, but it doesn't matter. Mike's gonna taste one. So really mm. the difference is you just, the difference is you just have to tamp them down a little bit more. Yeah, that's true but I'm kind of in rushing it, but you can see the grease. Okay, Martha wants to know what kind of oil. What was that? What kind of oil, Martha is asking. Oh, I use canola oil. Mike said I need more salt in it. So I'll add a little more salt to the rest of the batter. I've recently switched to diamond kosher salt, which is not as salty. So I probably have to redo some of my recipes a little bit. Let me see. Judy, where do you find diamond kosher salt? I've been looking for it. Anywhere. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay. 
Uh, I used to use Morton's, but all the cooks were saying use diamond. Right. Okay, these are getting, these look better. Yeah, those look photography worthy. Yeah. I think part of it was I didn't have the oil quite hot, quite high enough. But that's why you make enough so that after your first batch, you get a better sense of how you're doing it. Oh, the other thing is when we make a lot, I don't do all the batter at one time. I only do them kind of in two, two pound groupings because otherwise the batter sits and it gets dark and ugly. And so that's how we do it. I actually do it by running four, four frying pans at once. Well. It, it's a process. Uh, sure is. Okay. Okay, the, um, also- Signing please. off. Judy, thank you. Sure. Arlene, can I start our sh um, share and tell? It's Lauren. Yeah, I'm sorry, can you start what? This, I'll start our share and tell. Please, please. So um, this is a tradition my mom has had that um, every year, wherever she is, she looks for a dreidel. So pre-COVID, if she's traveling, she looks for a dreidel from wherever she is. And we have this enormous dreidel collection. And um, it's something that every year, it's really fun. We pack them up carefully. And then the next year we get to unwrap them and look at them again and remember where they're from. And, and they are housed in the living room on top of the piano. That is very lovely, really very lovely. Walking back. Lauren, we lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. I walking back to where I started. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any uh, Hanukkah traditions? Um, I I sort of it's not really a tradition, but I just like to use my um, my grandmother's the one who called me from heaven. Um, this is her menorah, which I believe was her mother's um, menorah. And she may have, you know, brought this over from Lithuania. I don't know if it, um, you know, was made before the state of Israel was founded long, long ago, because it says Zion there, but um, it makes me happy to be using this and thinking about, um, you know, all the Hanukkahs that it has seen, so. That's very beautiful. So I just want to add in with uh, the question about what time the latka pick up, pick up is check the newsletter or call the office and ask them. I'm looking for the answer right now. Give me a minute. Okay. So how does everybody handle all the gifts for Hanukkah for the kids? Anybody? I'll answer. We do a night with like my parents. So it's just whoever's there that night. And then we do one that's the presents from my aunts and my grandmother. So it's like families. And then we split the rest for between like two or three nights. So we have about three or four nights with no presents. Because, you know, that's always been very hard when you're competing with Christmas. It's always been an issue. So in our house, it's always been eight nights for everybody. To this day, I left them at my house for Daniel to pick up. Since I'm in Florida, they were all sitting in uh, New Jersey. But the, the gifts were always small, very small. You know, it could be chocolate gelt. It could be, for sure, socks. And uh, when Daniel was in college, I sent gifts for all of his roommates. So none of them were Jewish. So they wanted to know if this is a back to school holiday because everybody got socks. <laughs> I love that. I really love that. In my family, one of the things I do in order to keep myself sane is every child has a different wrapping with my grandchildren. Every child has a different wrapping paper. So I know that it's Stella's gift because she's got the 
you know, dark blue paper with the, uh, um, you know, menorahs and it's Sadie's gifts because she's got the dreidels um, and that's how I keep them straight. So I just, I just got a personal note from Martha. Uh, Daniel, my son, was born fifth candle and his bar mitzvah was Shabbat Hanukkah. So Martha just wrote me a very, very sweet note that it is a three Torah Shabbat this week that she's thinking of Daniel's bar mitzvah. Thank you. Arlene, can you hear yeah. me? Yes. I just want to add two things, actually. Um, we did this last year, and it actually worked out well. Hopefully, maybe we'll get to do it this year. So my son and grandchildren live out in California, so we see them on Zoom. And last year, we did play dreidel. And the way we did that, and Linda Mizell, you'll recognize this, where I stole this idea from, where every child could pick the charity they wanted to donate their <laughs> winnings to. So uh, whether it was an animal rescue, whether it was a Jewish, it didn't matter. So we played a couple of rounds and everybody had pennies and, and, who, and then after they got tired of the whatever, they'd count up their pennies and then they would tell us which charity they thought was important and that's where they would, they would put their winnings to. And it worked out pretty well. That was a, it was a nice thing last year. That is very lovely. We always include some sort of, um, a charitable piece, we often go shopping together. Like we'll go, we'll have our lacquers, we'll have our meal at like lunchtime and then we'll go to Target as a family and we'll hook up with a charity and either buy pajamas or toys or whatever. And the children are supposed to pick out something they would like for another child. It's a little chaotic, honestly, nice. but it works out really well. And they get a sense of, of what it's like to, um, to understand that they have things and other children may not. That's very nice. That, that's very nice, Linda. Yeah, it's good. Okay, are we um, ready to go back to uh, Susan? Hey, I am here. I have been um, checking on the cake. Um, it just, I don't know how much you'll be able to see from here. I just put the tin foil on top because it was just starting to brown. I don't think we'll get to take this cake. Can you see anything? Starting to brown a little bit. So I'm going to give it 20 more minutes in here and with the foil on it, but we will, what I'll do now is just glaze. Where's the cake? Okay, we're ready for the Julia Child moment when you bring out the, the one that's pre-done. Pre bring it out, now, there it is. Okay. okay. So we have to, um, we have to glaze it now and I'm trying to figure out if I can do this without knocking the computer off. All right, um, I got a, I had a spoon. And all this is now is glazing the cake. And this is a mixture of um, more lemon juice and, lemon juice and lemon zest and powdered sugar. Oh, this mm. is a great activity to do with kids. Exactly. Yeah. But it's also a great alternative to uh, donuts. Yes. Well, Linda and I had talked about doing donuts and the only kind of donuts I do is I bake them because I don't have a fryer and, you know, there's so much oil on Hanukkah. So I'm just going to sit here and play with drizzling this um, and a note from Claude that we're all thinking that the cake looks delicious it does look amazing thank you well this is the one that's 
that basically kind of pummels you with lemon. We, um, I turn the cake upside down and cut slivers out of the bottom to taste it. And um, hopefully the, the one that's coming out of the oven now will be just right. But how bad is it to be pummeled with lemon? That doesn't sound. But strange. that looks beautiful. Well, I will just. Your, your, that, but... your abstract artwork. Yes, this is. Um, I'm sure Julia Child would do this far more artistically. I'm sure it. she wouldn't. As a matter of fact, I think you hit it just right. Oh, thank you. So that's basically, basically it. Okay, so we have the drinks, we have the latkes, we have the cake. What more could anybody want? Risk it. <laughs> Actually, Jonathan makes brisket. I, I have no idea how to make a brisket. I am his sous chef because when he makes brisket, he goes through about five pots and pans. So I just stay here and clean up after him, but he makes terrific brisket. The only problem with brisket, it's, it's an all day babysitting affair. Yes. That's for sure. I make my own applesauce I to do. go with the, with the, um, does it, any, I have a Foley food mill. Does everybody know what that is? It's a thing that goes like this. Oh my, my mother God. had it and that I still make my applesauce that way. My mother had one also. Linda, what kind of apples do you use? I'm very, very picky. Um, I do a combination of uh, Macintosh and Granny Smith. And the ratio is, that's why I asked Judy, the ratio of the potatoes to onions. The ratio is if I have 10 um, Macintosh, then I have one Granny Smith. So if I have 20 Macintosh, I have two you know, Granny Smith, because the Granny Smith are tart. Yeah. Um, and they, it just, it, it's just enough tartness because the Macintosh are sweet. Yeah, but I, I make all Granny Smith. Sauce. I, I would go all Granny Smith. That's, that's you know, that's, that's me. That's what I usually do. I think I'm and more of a sour girl. What can I tell you? If really? I have a few extra apples, I'll throw them in, but it's, my applesauce is primarily Granny Smith's. And see, I didn't know this, Judy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And my I, sister will say it's too tart. <laughs> well, tell Terry if she wants some of mine. I always have some in the freezer. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to add? Any more questions? Any more sharing or showing that you want to do? Well, thank you, Arlene, for hosting this. Well, I have one more thing I would like everybody to do. If you would please all unmute yourselves, because I think that our ladies deserve a wonderful round of applause from everybody. Thank you all. Really look delicious. Well done. Thank you for letting us come and join you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. And uh, until next time. Aksumaya. 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 Thank you. Everybody, thank you. Lauren, stay on. Send me some of those latkes. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> David. That was David. Actually, Lauren and Claude, are you still there? Yeah, Lauren, Claude, Susan, Judy, and Shari. Please stay on while everybody else is, is where everybody else goes home, essentially. What's your daughter's name? Mary? Maya would like My daughter, Riley. Riley. What's her son's name? She is a, a, I remember you at that age. What's her son's name? What's your son's name, Sherry? Grayson. 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 I just want to say to everybody, what a fabulous job. Thank you. You did a fabulous job. Yeah, you Thank keep you. it moving. Well, and thank you, do you. It, ladies. You are you are large and in charge. Really, really pro. Okay. So Win, fa Win family, I have to tell you, your your um your your candle lighting was just beautiful. Thank you. And a lot of light in that family.
Lauren, you, you plowed through with a migraine. 